Well, thank you for your time here today, Paul. Uh, can you give us some, uh, what, what is your main reason just behind the purchase of the electric car? Hmm. Yeah, we'd been looking at it for probably about a year uh, before we went ahead and purchased the EV6. Um, and part of the, the reason behind it is we were trying to make our home more efficient um, back in Melbourne. Um, and we put in solar panels, double glazing, uh, did quite a few things, heat pumps for the hot water system. And electric vehicle was sort of part of that, that journey. Yeah, so, a, a logical yeah. progression. Yeah. Um, so with, with that in mind, was there an emotional uh, connection to your, your purchase decision? I wouldn't say emotional. I think it was very logical. If you ask my wife, you know, we'd researched this for probably a year. I'd done a lot of research, done, looked at a lot of different YouTube videos about the different cars available. So I think it was a very logical uh, decision rather than emotional. Um, you know, we, we did really like our previous car. Um, so making that change from a, uh, from a Volkswagen Passat to an electric car, you know, there was a little bit of um, consideration around that. But um, yeah, it was a very considered decision rather than emotional. In terms of technology then, do you feel and would you consider yourself uh, an early adopter? Not really, I think, I think we're probably just a little bit past that. Like, I think the, the earlier uh, people before, they may be going back a year, I'd say were early adopters. I don't really see myself as an early adopter with an EV, but talking to some of the, our friends and so forth that don't have EVs, some of the questions they asked about EVs, I still think maybe I am an early adopter <laughs> because they, uh, they don't understand a lot about EVs and things like range and charging and things like that. So uh, I think we're sort of on that, that bridge moving out of that early adopter. Excellent, um, great phase. response. Uh, so we've covered off how long have we been thinking about it. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you've referred to your friends who, who may not. Do you know anyone else who has a, an electric car? Not really, not in, not in our close friends. I know of people from work and things like that that have um, electric cars. Some of them have had them for a few years, um, but, but not people that I talk to on a very regular basis. Uh, so I haven't got a lot of feedback from uh, other people that I that I the close friends. They're all still driving um, other cars, um, and you know, they've been asking us lots of questions around our experience with it with an EV. So with the EV6, was taking one for a test drive uh, before you put, uh, before you purchased it was that important? Yeah, it was. I, I don't think uh, my wife would have been happy to buy a car without test driving it, and uh, we we're fortunate enough to actually be able to test drive it at one of the Kia. Uh, dealers it wasn't actually the one we purchased through. Um, we were just fortunate in terms of there being a test drive available uh, at a dealer, so we went and did it. And it was actually several months later uh, when we did the purchase. Was that EV6 test drive? Was that your first uh, time driving an electric car? It was. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I was a little bit nervous. Um, wasn't quite sure how the controls worked and things like regenerative uh, braking and so forth, but. Um, but yeah, once we drove it for 10 minutes, it was pretty straightforward. So I, I was going to say, did you find it became very quickly apparent that it is a car? Yeah, yeah. Even when we first, when we actually bought the car, we bought it in uh, Ballarat and driving it back from Ballarat to Melbourne uh, was a little bit interesting just because I first time I'd really driven it any distance. So I was a little bit, uh, a little bit nervous, but um, once you got on the road and driving, it was pretty straightforward. So excellent. Yeah. Um, was there an environment, so you mentioned obviously uh, making the house more efficient, so were mm -hmm. environmental concerns, were they a big part of your decision to, to purchase the EV? Yeah, it was. Um, I mean, clearly this car is more expensive than other cars you, know, you could buy that are probably comparable, you know, petrol or diesel. Um, but we thought it's worth spending the extra, extra money to, to, to buy it. Um, I got encouragement from my daughter who said like, you know, if you can afford it, you should really, you should really do it. And you know, this car will ultimately end up on the secondhand market. Um, so it's helping the, you know, the supply uh, in, in Australia. So it definitely was the reason why we, we bought it. Uh, we put 11 kilowatts of solar panels on at home, so we've got plenty of capacity there to run a house plus uh, charge the car yeah, brilliant. Uh, as well. Uh, so to that point, has owning the EV changed your, your daily routines? Not really, no. I, I mean, we never go to petrol stations obviously anymore. Um, Charging it really, I guess we thought about it a little bit at the start going, you know, how many kilometres range do we have left? You know, maybe thought about it a bit. Now we just plug it in every second or third day and, you know, we don't even think about it. So it's pretty straightforward from that. As long as we don't forget to plug it in, that's the, uh, that's the main thing. So. <laughs> that is a key part, yeah. but it's like your phone, right? If yeah. you forget to plug that in, you pay for it the next day. Uh, so is this, uh, is the EV6, is this your only car? It, it is. For myself and my wife, this is our only car that we use. We do have a 10-year-old car that our daughter uses just to get to university and, and back. Uh, but in terms of just myself and my wife, yeah, we just have the one car uh, that we use. So. Excellent. We've covered off the Passat. Um, 
so uh, your home charging setup, what, what have you done for that? Yep, so where we're standing now is, is our holiday house in Lawn, um, which we spend some time out here. So I'll explain both our Melbourne and here. So in, in Melbourne, where we've got the 11 kilowatts of solar, uh, we put in a 32 amp circuit, uh, 7.2 kilowatt charger, uh, which costs a bit of money to put that in. So it's a, it's a fairly significant uh, investment to put that in, but that obviously charges uh, reasonably quickly. Uh, typically, we never go below about 50%, maybe 40% on the battery. So to top it up to 80%, it's overnight. It's not even overnight, it's three or four hours um, just to top it up. Um, so that's what we've got set up in, in Melbourne. Um, so we try and uh, manage how much solar we use and you know, charge where we need to overnight at the cheaper uh, cheaper rates uh, in Melbourne. Um, here in Lawn, um, we couldn't put in a 32 amp circuit because our house here only has 40 amps going into it. So putting in a 32 amp circuit would mean we pretty much couldn't do anything else. So we've put in just a 15 amp um, circuit. It's a really, a really a portable charger mm -hmm. um, and that charges up overnight easily for the typical uh, scenario where we drive from Melbourne to here and just want to top up Perfect. Uh, and just the other thing is something that we were quite keen on is the, the vehicle to load capability in the car. Um, we looked around at how we could actually utilise that as like battery backup for uh, the house. So we've set it up in Melbourne and here um, such that if there's a power outage we can, we can switch over um, and take power out of the car and power uh, the house. And have you needed to do that? So we've used it here actually twice in the last four or five months. Um, you, you get reasonably frequent power outages in Lawn, being such a beautiful place with uh, so many trees. Uh, you do get powers, power line issues with the, the trees. Um, so in fact, just three or four weeks ago, we drove down here uh, on a Thursday night and we knew the power was out coming down here because I, I got an SMS on my phone. Um, so we got down here, the power was out. We couldn't open the garage door um, because it needs power. So I ran a lead from the car um, inside, opened up the garage door and then plugged it in and we had lights and everything uh, it's set up. Brilliant system. So, yeah. uh, so we've gone through charging at home. Um, so uh, you've mentioned obviously p charging at home seems to be a, a pretty robust solution for you. Public charging, do you find yourself using public infrastructure and, and if so, mm. do you have a, a favoured supplier? We've only used public charging really to test it. Um, so 100% of our charging has been either at our Melbourne home or in our holiday house here in Lawn. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't ventured on a big drive to Sydney or anything like that at this point. So I've tested out a couple of public charges, including a free one uh, here in Lawn. Um, I've tested out the fast one in Torquay at the RACV club yep. there, um, but we haven't had to use it. And, and I think uh, in, in our scenario, we don't, we've never needed, got anywhere need, near having to use a public uh, charger. So our home charging's worked for us so far. When we eventually go on a trip to Canberra or Sydney, uh, then of course we'll, uh, we'll use it then. Uh, the car's obviously very new. Uh, have you needed to service it at, the, at this point? We've had it for eight months and it's done the 3,000 kilometre uh, free service, which I think is a fairly basic uh, inspection. Uh, we're at about 11,000 kilometres now, so 15,000 it's due for service. Uh, so we haven't got to that point uh, as yet. So. Perfect. Um, now, obviously, mentioning vehicle to load, this is one of the features of the, uh, the Kia mm -hmm. and Hyundai platforms. Is there anything that you wish this car had that others have? Um, not really. Uh, we haven't come across anything that, uh, that, that it doesn't have that we really want. One thing that um, my wife would have liked would have been a sunroof. Uh, this is the, the two-wheel drive uh, version of the EV6. Uh, that doesn't come with the sunroof. Uh, we had that on a previous um, diesel Passat. Um, so we, you know, we do miss that a little bit, but um, that was a compromise you know, we had to make. But that was, that's really the only thing that I would say uh, we wish it had. So. so talking about that compromise then, for availability, did you, have, did you have choice? Is this the car that, that you set out to buy or was it sort of governed by what was available? Yeah, we, we decided on the EV6 really as their preferred, preferred car. We looked at quite a lot of other, other cars available. Uh, we decided really on the EV6. Um, we put our names down at a number of different dealers uh, to try and get on the list to try and get a car. Um, in the end, I got a call uh, from the dealership uh, in Ballarat and they said, we've got a white two wheel drive one. Um, are you happy with that? Probably also in our preferred color, uh, but in hindsight, we actually do quite like the white, um, but that was what was available. So we, we jumped at it. Yeah, so. brilliant. Uh, has owning the EV changed the way that you drive or is it now just a car? I don't think it's changed the way I drive. It's really just a car. I mean, I do find it very easy to drive very smooth, very quiet. Um, I find it probably more pleasurable to drive than, than you know, previous cars. Um, but 
it's just a car really. I mean, it, it drives like a normal car, except that it's quieter and smoother. So, yeah. The three things that you like the most about having purchased mm -hmm. a, an electric car? Okay, uh, three things I'd say probably the env environmental side. So ha having a electric car, I think that, that was certainly an important. Feels good. Yeah, feels, feels good. And I think um, it, it works out cost effectively for us as well. Like mm. we've done it on the Novated lease uh, through my work. Um, using that FBT exemption that the government brought in uh, several months ago. So we've, you know, not, we've leased it uh, by that way. Um, the other probably key things that we really like, um, that I like, is I really like the regenerative um, eye pedal, they call it with Kia. Um, so basically I rarely use the brake um, when I'm driving. So apart from maybe in the city where you might need to brake a little bit more regularly, um, I almost never use the brake. Um, so driving from Melbourne to Lawn, pretty much one pedal um, driving the whole way. So I really like that and, and also the vehicle to load capability, um, I've used that um, a couple of times here at Lawn and to me that's a, a critical feature. I wouldn't buy another electric car without that, mm. that feature. Three things that you know, maybe bugbears or, or, or you wish were different with, with the electric car. Uh, struggling to think of that actually. <laughs> <laughs> See, well, you, you don't actually have to have that because if, if it's all working and it's just mm. a car, it's, it's kind of, it's doing the job. Um. <laughs> this is, so this is the thing, like the whole premise of, of what we're trying to do here is show the normality mm. that you can have it and it's a car and you can do everything and it doesn't mean you need to compromise. Yeah, oh, look, I would say the, um, I mean, if, if, if we're gonna answer it now, I mean, the, the, the thing that probably would just be on my mind is if I was going to do a long distance drive to Sydney or somewhere on Christmas Eve, um, I would be nervous yep. you know, because of the, the charging uh, facilities available on the highways and so forth, driving at peak times, that would be worrying. Um, so but we've seen that on holiday periods, lines uh, yeah. are, you know, of cars queuing up for the charges, because obviously it's not a you know, five minute fill. Mm -hmm. um, that obviously requires more infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, that's, that's something critical, I think, to get the adoption up of EVs in Australia. We need more infrastructure, uh, particularly around the highways and the, uh, the, the rural areas. If you look at uh, this area here in Surf Coast, uh, there's charges coming in Anglesey, Aries Inlet, Lawn, which you'll see, but they're not there yet. Mm. Um, so there, there really is a gap between like Torquay and Warrnambool. So if people from Melbourne want to go to 12 Apostles, um, it's a bit of a struggle in an EV, unless you've got somewhere to charge uh, on the way. So I think that that's um, um, something that really needs to be fixed um, by, by the government encouraging more charges in, in those sort of tourist areas and highways uh, and that'll take away a lot of concerns that people people have. Would you recommend an electric car to, to, to friends and family? So people see you mm. as a, an, an advocate, they come to you uh, for advice. Would you recommend one? I would. I think if people can afford it, um, obviously EVs at the moment are a little bit more expensive than, than other cars, but I think if they can afford it, I think it's a good example to set in, in terms of environmental and, and setting the right direction um, you know, amongst the community. So I think if they can afford it, they should. I think something that's important is that you need to be able to charge either at home or at your work, perhaps, maybe 80% of the time. If you can't do that, then I think it would become frustrating having to rely on public charges all the time. So you really need to have most of your charging at home or at work. Um, and then the 20% when you're going on holidays or something going somewhere different, um, that's okay, as long as there's enough public charges. But if there's too much public charging, you'd spend too much time waiting around for uh, your car to charge. Why the EV6? You, mm -hmm. know, you said you looked at a bunch of other cars. Yep. What did this do uh, that, that sort of made it stand out from the, from the crowd? Well, probably one of the features I was looking at was the vehicle to load, yep. and that, that cut down the options pretty, pretty quickly. Um, we had a preference looking for um, cars that had similar drivability to normal cars. So going to a full like touch panel type experience in terms of how you interact with the car was something that we weren't really that comfortable with. So something we really like about this car is that the dash and all the controls are quite similar uh, to a normal car. So that was important. Um, so that was something that was a key key decision made. And also we like the look of the EV6 as well. So that that in combination with the other things I mentioned, I think were the, the key drivers. But, and it was, I think it was car of the year. Uh, 
Well, from some from some other random oh, outlet, okay, I believe it was. Uh, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was our it was our drive car of the year, best electric car above seventy but below one hundred and twenty, mm -hmm. which that's not really the easiest thing to say. Yeah. But anyway, I mean, some, something else. If I mean, if, if it fits, if, something else is that we wanted the SUV side as well. Um, you know, driving down to lawn and the way we use it, we do take a bit of stuff sometimes in the car. So having a bit of space in the SUV to put you know, suitcases and bags and things like that was important as well. And the dog. And the dog. So the dog takes up the whole back seat. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we need a bit of space in the back, which some sedans struggle to fit our, our um, luggage in.